Pittsburgh getting healthy. The team doesn't allow big running days. It could spell a lot of problems for the Broncos. Hey, how are you, folks? Jason Horowitz and NFL.com's Pat Kerwin with you, breaking down the 4-1 and one Steelers and the 2-3 and three Broncos. Both teams coming off buys, Pat, but really completely different attitudes heading into that bye week. The Broncos, before the break, uh, had the worst loss at home in more than 40 years. What's the first thing that sticks out in your mind about what, the way that Denver's playing right now? Well, Denver's home field advantage, which was a big home field advantage in the NFL. Maybe the best one with the altitude and consideration here. That's gone. In the last two home games, they've given up 64 points and only scored 17. They've got a running game that's not producing the way they could. They're going to have Travis Henry for a few more weeks. And then they get some real problems coming. Yeah, then they have problems, then you get Selvin Young. But let's talk about the defense that's giving up yes. all those points. Against Pittsburgh, who obviously we know likes to run the football. Willie Parker's very good at it. Denver's defense near the bottom in the NFL at stopping the run. It doesn't seem like it works out on paper there. No, and you know, you're talking about the number two running offense against the number 32 run defense. That's a bad combination. I talked to um, a couple of the Denver Broncos on their break, and they didn't have an answer for me. What's going wrong, Sam Adams? I don't know. We should have the players to do it. I can't understand why we're not doing it. I think what happens with this team is people have figured out get off the edge of the off-tackle play at the undersized defensive ends, and you're going to find a home in there. And the middle linebacker, this is a team that could have used a guy like Jeremiah Trotter yep. uh, in the middle to help stop the run. And Al Wilson, who, again, is not well, in Denver. Well, you can have a guy about... retire. No, well, he would, but he didn't have to retire. He could have kept playing. Uh, you know, on top of it, for Pittsburgh, you, you get Heinz Ward back this week. You get Santonio Holmes back. So you add weapons on the outside as well. As for Denver, their main weapon on offense has been, or should have been, Javon Walker. Mm -hmm. Hasn't played since the middle of game three against Jacksonville. When that happened, when he went down, passing attack for the Broncos kind of went with him. Yeah, the passing attack has kind of faded away from them. Now remember, this kid Cutler, the quarterback, is young. He's not doing a bad job, but can he win games? Can he take a team on his back and take him on a two-minute drill and win a game? No, he's not ready for that, and that's what's going to happen this week against a Pittsburgh Steeler defense that can blitz from anywhere. I think they've got 17 sacks already, and they bring the heat from the outside backers, the inside backers, Troy Polamalu will be back in the field. Imagine Cutler trying to figure out what coverage you're in with Troy Polamalu. He'll line up as a defensive end. He'll be a middle linebacker. He'll be a safety. He'll line over at corner. The guy's incredible. It's going to make it tough for Cutler to understand what to do. So having said that, how crucial is it? Because you mentioned Travis Henry. He'll be there for a couple more weeks. We'll see how what happens with the suspension. How crucial is it for him to be that first guy to get 100 yards against the Steelers in X amount of games? Well, they haven't done it since 2005. No one's done it. I suspect they won't be able to do it against the Pittsburgh team. I think Pittsburgh benefits from the bye more. You know, for Denver, they're just regrouping. Pittsburgh's getting stronger. I think they're going to have everyone back except the nose tackle. But Chris Hoke will be on the nose. Chris Hoke played the nose for the Pittsburgh Steelers in the year they went to the Super Bowl for almost the entire season. They will be fine against the run. They'll reduce it and get this to a passing game. And there's not enough weapons in Denver now. All right, let's take all those numbers and all that information into a computer. Put 10,000 tests, get 10,000 results. Remember, all human are all mathematical elements, no human elements whatsoever. It's the AccuScore prediction. And here's what it came up with for the Sunday Nighter. Steelers, big. Pat, you agree? I agree uh, wholeheartedly with this. And that 41-3 game where San Diego put a whipping on Denver uh, indicates the kind of thing that can happen to the Denver Broncos now. I don't know it'll go like that. I will say this. If, if Denver was ever lucky enough to reduce this to a passing attack, I still have questions about the Pittsburgh Steel pass protection, but it's not going to even get there. Yeah, Ben Roethlisberger's not going to have to worry about that. Just hand Correct. it off to Willie Parker. Pittsburgh trying to start 5-1 and one for just the second time in the last 10 years. They try to do that in Denver Sunday night beginning at 8.15 p.m. Eastern. For more on this game or anything else, be sure to stay with CBSSports.com. Watch everything else all over the CBS Audience Network. For Pat Kerwin, I'm Jason Horowitz. Take care.